All right, welcome to the fourth coffee break. Uh, this is the episode number 40, uh, long way. And uh, thank you for joining, welcome again. And uh, this is a very open space for any kind of question, general topic that you have. And uh, we usually start with, with you. If you have any topic that you'd like to bring up, any projects that you are working with, what's going on? See some new, new names this week. Anyone new joining us? First time? Let me stop sharing for a moment. Uh, and move this here. Hello, sorry, I I came here. Now it's it's okay, fine. <laughs> Jose, how do, where, where are you calling yes, from? Jose, where are you calling from? Uh, I am calling from Venezuela now. Mm, cool. Welcome. Is this your first time? Yes. Yes. All right. Okay, I guess people are shy this week. Okay, so let me start then with... Other coffee, it's what happens. Hello, Jaime. Yeah, probably need more coffee. But do you have any questions, Augusto? Don't be shy. Yes, I do have lots <laughs> and lots of questions. <laughs> I have one question in the chat. Go ahead. Just ah. Yes, Rachel, let me, let me read it. Is there a way to use this this viewer to view models at SVF2. Hmm. You were talking about the uh, LMV Ninja. Yeah. Or if there's another um, like uh, um, viewer that I can use without our customizations on top. Um. Oh, that's a good point. I think we had not migrated some of our samples. And uh, actually, I just realized that yesterday which is a very good point. We should do it. All right. So let me let me take the um, action then to update some of our samples, and let me open one of them. So this sample here it's um, based on the on the tutorials we have, but it's not using SVF two. So mm -hmm. I'll definitely move that to SVF two. So that's one that you can use. Awesome. But, Thank you. Uh, another way for you to do it is that um, so we are using this Learn Forest tutorial. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's essentially this section of the tutorial right here. Right? Okay. So if you click on view your models, that's a tutorial. Great. Now I, I know it's a, a lot of extra steps, but if you go, if you click here, you can see the GitHub for that sample. And okay. uh, that can be easily deployed to locally, but awesome. needs to be adjusted to SVF2. So that's something that uh, uh, we can do definitely and uh, make sure that this sample it's using SVF2. Okay, thank you. It should, it should be doing that already. We are, we are behind. Okay, my, my name is Samantha Fess, the second time. Can I have a chance to talk? I prepare a presentation for you and so that uh, I will show you my challenges, what I'm working on for oh. And I also receive email uh, for the accelerator program, which I'm going to answer mm -hmm. and um, uh, I'm talking, um, what I'm doing is I'm building a business and the business I've been working for a long time, for more than six years, and it uh, integrated with AutoCAD. So uh, before I show to my challenges, I just want to give you the highlight of my business so that you'll understand my challenges. So can yes. I share my screen? Yes, please. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll just, uh, 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 please, Try to show what, what you have and remember that we are recording this. Definitely no problem. No problem. So uh, my business, so, okay, this is okay. My... We can see it. Okay. Um, so this is uh, the website uh, I'm building on it. It's a dynamic. So what happened is this is a furniture company and whenever they want to choose a product, they specify it. And once they specify it, finally, they get the AutoCAD application. Through that, they build workstations, okay? When they build workstations, so they want to put it so that after they build it in AutoCAD, I want them 
to load it in Forge so that they can take the advantage of a Forge. Mm -hmm. So the way I'm doing it is uh, I prepared this presentation. So I would like to split because what I did is uh, based on the PowerPoint that you have the viewer, I study a lot and I built this um, model. But this one has to be uh, done uh, dynamically because the user can upload it anytime they want. So what they want is they only have to see the interface part. And also they have to log in above all uh, since it is a collaborative. So when the user one is building it, the other person also can use it. So I want to divide that type of solution. So, and when I see your model through here, I want to split it into front end and back end. The front end is going to be only the user, where the back end is all these forges has to be done, including the bucket. So one of the challenge I have is because the bucket has to be done individually and it has to be globally uh, individual. So how can I put this uh, for the dealer and as well as for the structures that I'm thinking about to implement this? Do you get my point? Uh, so uh, you, you are asking us how to separate the models between your customers? No, but, but to split it into between uh, front end and back end. So I want to put the forge side on the server side so that the user will log in. The user will log in. Mm -hmm. So when they log in, they specify all these things, and then they can upload. Oh, okay, so the application, they can upload it. So it means that the bucket has to be created dynamically. And how I'm going to split this sample of work that you uh, show um, you presented. So how can I split it into? front end for the user so that I will take the rest in the back end. I just want to get some guidance, you know. I'm not asking to help me on the the programming part. It was done in Node.js. Yeah, uh, My application yeah. also done in Node.js. So I just want to understand which part has to be on the front end, which I'm going to present it. And then when the user log in, they can upload it and all the bucket and other things has to be done on the back end side so that they can call it can call the forge apis yeah so mo most of that code is already uh, is already running on the, on the server side i think what you are asking is how to make it password protected right so you you have asked the user to type in his password before joining is that correct yeah but that part is it's not that part i'm talking about. when they upload it, they upload it the but done. I have to do it. I think the bucket one. Yeah. So because I don't want I don't want them to do it because I have I'm going to have different users. Yes. So if you look at the source code, there is a function to create the bucket, right? And that function on that sample is triggered by the interface. But what you want to do is to trigger that when they upload the file. Okay. Does it make sense? It makes sense. The other thing is, for example, when we load the model, it. Uh, it, it yeah. Can it, I can it, I share can I share for a moment? Oh, let me stop it. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, we share. Okay. Uh, so. Okay. Let me stop sharing. Okay. Let me try again. <laughs> All right. Okay, so that's the that's the sample you, you are using. Sorry, okay. this so that's the tutorial, and that's the sample you are using, right? So the sample essentially allow you to create buckets and upload files. And I saw that you are using Node, so that's the one I have here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the same, the same front end client side, uh, uh, the the client side code is shared across those languages, but the the, the back end, the server side, can be Node.net or whatever, right? So for Node, you see there is a OSS and a model derivative file. So what, what it does is that it exposes endpoints, one to create buckets, uh, one, uh, sorry, one to get buckets, 
want to create buckets right here and uh, want to upload objects, right? Yeah. So what, what you are trying to do probably is that you just need one endpoint that you say upload user file, something like that, right? So that, that endpoint will create a bucket. If the bucket's not there yet, then upload the file. And after that, we will also go to the model derivative code and trigger this piece of code that translates a file. So essentially, you want one, one endpoint that is doing everything that you want, which is right, uh, create bucket, upload object, and translate. OK. Yeah. So uh, in, in, this is, um, this is the, the, the code is here, right? You just have to reorganize and make sure, make sure that you are doing all three tasks at once. And uh, remember that you cannot create two buckets with the same name. So you have to check if the bucket's already there or handle that scenario. And uh, no, the, the, as this is very, very specific. So this, this is a general instruction, right? If you want to go very specific and, and try this, I would say try this code. And if you're still, if you still having questions on how to run this code, you can definitely help. And uh, I, I think I mentioned before, but uh, you can always book some time with us to discuss your very specific, you know, your specific piece of code. And uh, you can you know, book one-on-one -on -one time with us here. Uh, you said that you are in Canada last yeah. time, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so if you book a time, uh, we, you can always see the time zone. So um, Michael is here, Pacific. Can, uh, can, you send, can you send the link for this? Because yes. last time mm -hmm. when I was trying to look at it, I can't find it. So later on, I... Uh, tweet for Jamie to get more information. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, get, right uh, there. It's already there now. Uh, so, but no, just just to, to be complete, no, go to the forge.autodesk.com and then community all events, and then you can see the one on one time. Okay. Um, cool. Thank you. Uh, interesting. Uh, you create the 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 the. the the workspace, right? That's that's interesting. I'm looking forward to have some uh, presentation when you you are able to have those pieces working. Please please yeah. share that as well. It will be very yeah, nice to, I, to see what I'm you going you've to, done. I'm going to exhibitions, the world's biggest office furniture exhibition in Chicago in June. So I'm preparing mm -hmm. for that. So because my competitors do not have this type of cloud solutions, they are still using it, you know, by distributing DVD. So I hope I'm yeah. trying to get customers. <laughs> That's a, it's an interesting point, right? There are several benefits of using cloud approach. Um, you can use, you, know, you, don't, you, don't, you don't need a desktop. You don't need to ship DVDs. Definitely. I'm not sure if computers have DVDs anymore to read those, those discs. Uh, <laughs> they are still using it. <laughs> yeah, but there is also the business side, right? You can go to subscription mode, which is uh, it's more reliable on the long term. So there are a lot, a lot of uh, interesting things about going, going to the cloud and uh, yeah. That worked for you. All right. Uh, thank you, Smenji. Very, very nice. Thank you for sharing. Good, good project. And I did see another question from Edgar. He was saying um, having trouble displaying IFC files. And uh, is where are trying to display them? And what kind of troubles are you having? Yeah. Thanks Edgar. for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, basically, I followed through all these these steps, and as soon as you use a Revit file, I'm okay, and also in the uh, Node.js environment. Um, but if I throw a rail infrastructure IFC at it, IFC 2x3, I get a lot of issues with distortion of the files. I'm on a mobile phone, so I can't really share that picture, but uh it's it's not i say it's not um how do you say this you, you can't show this to a client yet so what i'm yeah. trying to do is i'm trying to sort of wrap my head around how can i build a uh, a model checker uh, there are several out there uh by autodesk and also by non-autodesk products but i like the forge platform um Rail as an industry or infrastructure in general is a bit of a laggard where it comes to the IFC classification. So that's the first hurdle I need to jump. Um, but then at least I'd hope the um, the files look great. So I spoke with some some people and they say there's probably something happening in the background with the translation. 
uh, from 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 IFC to the to the SWF file. At the same time, it could be an origin issue, but I don't know where to get started with with figuring out that I, yeah, again, yeah. To give you an example, the rail profile just jumps all over the place, right? It's no longer a straight line. Mm. Okay, so we we've noticed that before IFC um, glitches or some some sort. Some sort. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. What I, what I would ask you if that is if it's possible if you have that model that you can share. You don't have to share the sure. whole model, but in, if you can no, isolate can. a piece that works as well, so it's up to you. But uh, uh, um, something that is not no confidential from for, from your customers, and if you, if you submit that to forge.help at autodesk.com. And uh, okay. just maybe just a print screen showing this 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 is the I piece can that I'm. I do that. Yeah, we're going to investigate, right? So uh, there is not much that you can do on your side. Uh, okay, there are a few things that you can do on your side, right? You can select which pipeline to use, so you can use either um, uh, Navis or uh, Revit translation for IFC. Mm-hmm. Uh, but after that, there's not much that you can do, right? Um, uh, so if, if no. it's still not working, then it's probably something that we have to look at. So if you can submit the, people, the file. Yeah, yeah, the people I spoke to also said, look, uh, what does it do in Navis? And also Navis doesn't do it well enough, right? I have the same mm-hmm. issues in, the, in, in Navis work if you just open that. So if Navis as an engine is used in the back, that, that, yeah, that problem just reciprocates, I think. All right. So but yeah, yeah I'll, try, I'll, I'll, I'll share that info uh, info with you guys. It would be, yeah, it would be very cool. Uh, again, um, trying to sort of also make sure that the um, that the infrastructure domain sort of gets some exposure to the Forge tool. I, I'm yeah. trained as an architect, but landed in the infrastructure business. And mm-hmm. yeah, I, I can't show, let's say, the people any of the goodies or the, the, the benefits yet. That's that's a bit of a shame. Yeah. So uh, the other thing that you can also try is look at the community and then lightning talks. And, yeah, yeah, uh, I'm, I know. If, I'm I'm trying. That's what, that's how I ended up here. <laughs> this one here, this IFC way. workflows with more derivative. Have you seen this one? I think I have. Okay, so this is a 20 minutes talk, and he explained all the possibilities with IFC. Uh, using the I'm Reddit gonna look and, at it again. Yeah, it's a 20 minute video. Uh, he explains all the details. So yeah, something to get started. Cool. cool. Okay. But you know, if Great. the problem is still there, uh, send us the file so you can investigate forge.help at autodesk.com. And I'm going to type that email on the chat window. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you, Edgar. Hey, Augusto, one of the one of the workflows, is it possible to take an I uh, to take a never mind okay never mind i'll I'll, I'll contact you afterwards go ahead michael (laughs) don't be shy all right um all right uh thank you edgar by the way anyone else oh hi yeah i have one question about uh using uh, French language on uh, Forge. Is it possible to use Inventor to make uh, bill of materials in French? You want to use Inventor Design Automation to get the mm-hmm. bill of materials in French. French. Hmm. I see Adam is here. Am I? Uh, I yes. uh, are you? Oh. <laughs> I'm thinking. Yeah. No, I, I think probably it's just the English version running on design automation, I think. How, how is it with Revit? Are, are there language versions available? I don't yeah, think that's so. what I was trying to think. I think it is, right? Is there? Um, I think so too, yeah. Because then you, you can just I mean, specify that on the command line when you launch it. Yeah, could be worth a try. Yeah. I'm looking here. Is an automation developer guide? And I recall there was something about that. Let's see, maybe it's in the command line options listed somewhere.
we'll have to look at it. Uh, the joke I, we don't record it right now, but uh, I, would, I would suspect that you can do it from the command line. Okay, I will follow the blog the session, so maybe that okay. there will be the solution. Mm -hmm. That would, that's probably strong. Yeah. Okay, I don't think that's there. Um, we'll have to check um, mm -hmm. if that's available on the command line. I don't recall it right now, but yeah, definitely do it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I don't see it. I know that you can do it on your local AutoCAD. That, that's the one I recall. But I'm not sure if the others are like that too. Okay, but don't rest. you have to install the language uh, package? Um, I have a you, doubt that it's installing everything. I I I know that Revit you have to install um, uh, localization package, mm -hmm. not the yeah. not the translation of the product, which is a different thing, right? So the mm -hmm. the localization package includes um, uh, template libraries. But the, the interface is, it's, it's a different thing. So that's the one that I'm thinking if the interface mm -hmm. can be to be selected there. But even if it's a possible on the desktop, doesn't mean it's possible on the, on the server side. But we will ask. Thank you, Najoko, definitely try. Uh, the, the next thing will be if, if, on, if by only switching that will allow the view of materials to be on the, on the local language. And uh, I don't know. We we we'll, we'll check about the translation and the the other one. For instance, if you have a Revit file, uh, the, the language is defined can also be defined on the parameter name, right? So that's why sometimes you translate a file and the names are coming in in, in the local language because of the name of the parameters. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll check on it. Okay. Thank you. Um. There was a question from Gerard. Would you like to open that up? Oh. Are you still here? Gerard? I'm saying this right. Hi, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so um, yeah, I just have been talking to a customer recently and they've got a, a SharePoint, an existing SharePoint site that uh, they have links to their BIM360 teams. Um, that all works for, fine for them. They can click on the link, open the model, view it inside in their SharePoint site. Um, they've switched over to BIM 360 because their Teams account are, is, that's an older version, an older technology. Um, they've been told to switch over to BIM 360 and they can't achieve the same thing uh, in the BIM 360 environment. So I was just looking at what could be done using Forge Viewer. You know, just to click on a link in the SharePoint site, open the, floor, the model uh, from the BIM360 site in Forge Viewer and let them play around with it. Would you have any idea what the best approach is on that? So, um, you, can, you, can, you can embed the viewer into a SharePoint page. We, we've, we've done this before. Uh, you can use the iframe option that's the easiest one, right? You can just use an iframe in SharePoint to host a web page. Yeah. The, the challenge is that you cannot really share a BIM360 model with anyone like that, right? BIM360 is permission-based, meaning uh, even if it's shared, it needs to be shared with someone that, is or, that already, have, already have access to that model. So create a public link to a Revit mod, to a module, sorry, inside BIM360. It's not, it's not possible through the product. Now, on the API, uh, what you can do is to create a, a web page, right, that will show a viewer. And uh, to show that, to show a model, you use a two-legged token instead, right? But keep in mind that once you do it, that two-legged access token has, a, a, has access to all the modules because there is no restrictions anymore. So you, you want to make sure that the viewer in that at that point, it's using using uh, viewables read, 
and, and only viewables read. And, uh, and then you, know, you, you can create a viewer that will show a model using a viewables read two legged token to view a model. And then you get that page and embed as an iframe inside SharePoint or any other system. Okay. All right. So yeah, obviously the, the permissions is an issue then anyway. Um, yes. Maybe they could uh, they could add a, a specific user account to give permissions to just the required items. But I suppose if the if the users are just clicking on links to open particular models anyway, they won't be able to navigate around. Uh, they'll just be able to open the ones that they are presented with. Yeah. So if if you do a two legged with viewables read access token, right? They can only okay. see the models they have the URN. And as the URN is, is somehow hard to, to, to guess, right? They will not be able to, to view any, any specific model. They only see the models that you give them the URN. If you create a user to do it, um, then uh, only the models that user have access to, but still uh, anyone that gain access to that SharePoint page can view all the models that a new user can see. So in, in the end, it's essentially the same because you are you have uh, you have SharePoint. So I would say that you you have this if you have this application running to, to show the viewer and you have SharePoint with access permission, then you're mostly safe, right? Because you're check we are checking on the SharePoint side as well. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. Cool. Thank you for your question. Interesting one. Uh, uh, from Rachel, should I read or you, would you like to ask? Uh, yeah, I can ask it. Um, so is it possible that um, since DWG files can contain 2D and 3D components, is it possible that they could be incompatible with SVF2? Um, Hmm. I, I don't know if DWG it's by default compatible. Okay. Um, that's I would have to check. But uh, when you translate a model, mm -hmm. the the 3D model is translated as SVF or SVF2, right? And the 2D model is translated as F2D model, which is a bit different. So the F2D contains, uh, it's a bit different because um, it's essentially about lines and colors and line weights. So it's a mm -hmm. bit different. So 2D models are F2D instead mm -hmm. of SVF. I see. Um, so possibly if you're viewing everything as SVF2 and then this part of the file is F2D, it, it could have an issue, maybe. The it, it, should, it shouldn't matter, right? Okay. Because you are you are loading a different model. Mm -hmm. But then that's something that we we can double check. Okay. For um, sure. What would happen in that case? But I, I maybe I'm I'm suspecting that the DWG may not be translating to SVF two yet. Okay. I'll, I'll I'll check that and and definitely send back. Sure. I think we we talked about that this week last week, right? Yeah, yeah, last week, and I was able to isolate it. I scheduled some time. Um, uh, to chat about it tomorrow, mm -hmm. but um, okay. just wanted to double check. Yes, and I'll, I'll I'll do some some check some some research before that. Then awesome, thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Um, uh, Jose Rodriguez, uh, some experience with integration viewer with Angular framework JavaScript. Uh, so in general, the viewer it's it's language independent. So the viewer is is a div running inside your web page. So it can be Angular, React, or anything like that. The, <clears throat> the only uh, major point to consider when using a framework is to understand how the framework uh, renders the page, right? So for instance, uh, React may be hiding and re-rendering elements. So you want to make sure that the viewer element is properly disposed when you move from one page from one state to the other. Or if you have you no know, single page applications, when you're moving between states, the viewer is properly um, destroyed or deallocated, if that's the case for you. And I'm not sure if you have a sample in Angular anymore. Most of the samples we have are, are vanilla, right? All right, so we are just about time and uh, I don't wanna go run over the 30 minutes so we can all have time to 
do other things. We have lots and lots of things to do. The next coffee break will be again in two weeks. Uh, same link, same time, uh, February 23rd. And that's it. Thank you very much for joining today. Hope you had a good time. And uh, see you in two weeks. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.